just encamp around us, oh God. We invite you in to encamp around us. Take territory here, oh God. We thank you for what you're doing in this place, oh God. We lean not to our own understanding, but God, we acknowledge you in all our ways, oh God. We ask that you bind everything that's not like you. Hallelujah. We pray that you loose everything that is in heaven here on earth, oh God. We invite you to land heaven on earth. Lord, we thank you for the word that's coming forth. We thank you for our family of faith, oh God, that is joining us, e-members. We thank you, oh God, for our Savannah, Georgia e-member, our Birmingham, Alabama, Central Florida, Olive Branch, Mississippi, Auburn, Alabama. We thank you, oh God, that they are joined and partnered up with us, and we pray that you bless them, oh God. We pray for healing to sweep across this nation like never before. Oh God, we bind disease. You said whatever we bind on earth, shall be binding in heaven and we are going to lose healing right now. We lose healing in our families. We lose healing in our souls. We lose healing in our nation. Oh God, we just adore you this morning. We say move by your power. Move by your might. Move in our homes, oh God. Move like never before. Lord, we give you permission to have your way this morning. We give you permission to do only what you can do. Mend every heart, turn lives around, restore, redemption is yours, and it is here now. We invite you in, God. Oh, you're in for a treat if you're joining us this morning. We are worshiping God in spirit and truth, and we're coming and we're saying, God, move by your power this morning. Lord, let us shake the atmosphere right now and then permeate it with your presence, oh God. Fill us up till we want no more. Let us overflow with more of you and less of the world. Use us for your glory in this season, oh God. Use us for your glory. You be glorified in the heavens and in earth. Oh God, we just adore you. Come on, come on. If you adore the Lord, come on and stand to your feet if you're in the house and bless him this morning. In Jesus' mighty name, we lose love and peace in your houses today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, the praise thing is going to come forth this morning. Hallelujah. 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 We just thank God for being here. Hallelujah. I've been excited about the Lord today. Hallelujah. I've been came with a praise on their heart this morning. Hallelujah. I mean, you know, we could have been dead and gone. We could have lost our minds. Hallelujah. But God seen fit for us to be here. Thank you, everybody, to stand on your feet and help me sing this song. Every praise. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship. Every word of worship. With one accord, every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise is to our God.
Good morning, CLP. Good morning. Good morning. Y'all ready for me to sing? Yes. <laughs> no, Pastor ain't going to let me do that. That's not my call. Amen. Um, but me and Pastor have the honor of doing announcements and ties and offer offering on today. Um, we would like to welcome you. If you are joining us via Facebook Live, we would like to welcome you to COP today. If you are joining us in-house in our drive-up service, we would like to welcome you hey. to COP today. Amen. Amen. Um, here are a couple of our announcements. If you have been watching us via stream or attending and would like to join, please reach out to us at our email, iampurpose2 at gmail.com, or you can contact us directly on our Facebook page and send us a DM message. Get in our DM and we will respond. Please don't forget that Children's Church, Children's Ministry is every Wednesday via stream, I mean via, via Zoom at 6 p.m. for ages 2 to 12. And Youth Ministry is on Thursday for ages 13 to 17, also at 6 p.m. Please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Yes, we have a YouTube channel. So all of our partners, if you have not subscribed, please do so today. And please make sure that you share with one of our members or with one of your friends. Ladies, we will have our next Women's Fellowship the end of this month on the 25th. And we have a surprise for you. <laughs> hit, hit, we're going to be outside. It's going to be fun. Also, if you have not downloaded our church app, please make sure that you do Church of Purpose Dothan app. Please make sure that you download the app. Also, on our church members page, I have uploaded a form for our pastor's ordination service. So, if you have not had a chance to fill out that form, please do so. If you are planning to attend the pastor ordination service, we'll be in Birmingham, Alabama at Mount Canaan for a gospel but we will need a count and you will have to fill out this form. So that's why I'm trying to see who's coming so I can make sure we fill out our COVID form for attending our pastor ordination service so they can make sure that they have enough room and space for us so we can worship God freely. Amen. 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 Also, purpose-driven by the Becky Pastor. Uh, we'll start on... Next Saturday. Back up, baby. Back up. Come on, y'all. Let's start this back again. Media, I'm sorry. We'll we'll get the, the flyer update to put up also. Also, please remember that first and third Sundays are always drive up, second and fourth are birthday. Amen. Amen. I hope I didn't miss any announcements. If I did, I'll come back at the end of service. Um, first thing. I, I forgot to tell you this also. Um, the youth are looking at possibly moving their service time, and we will be announcing that real soon, uh, as soon as uh, Sister Kim gets all that in line. We have a flyer to update uh, the time in which the youth meet because of some of the school activities and things like that that's going on. Uh, so they can kind of navigate it and get that right. Uh, so we can continue to minister to the youth. All right. Listen, I got the opportunity um, to do tithe and offering with you guys this morning. And I'm going to bring your attention to Proverbs 18 and verse 16. It says, A man's gift maketh room for him and bringeth him before great men. And a lot of times what, what we equate the scripture to is that the gifts and talents that God gave us will put us before great people and put us in great situations. But when you go back and kind of look at the root of what this was talking about, you had a lot of people that would use money to get ahead of the line. All right? And some of them did it crooked. You know, we didn't see this in uh, real life that, hey, if I want to navigate around, I slide you this, and it watch this. It puts me straight to the front of the line. That's right. Disney got something called like a fast pass where you pay a little extra, watch this. You got some people got to sit in line for three hours, and because you gave a little extra, it gives you access, watch this, to skip the line. What I'm trying to tell y'all today is when we become good stewards over what God has given us, 
And watch this. We worship God in the aspect of tithing and offering. It's almost like God gives us those bands yeah. that they got in Disney. And a lot of things that we usually would have to wait for, God allows us, watch this, to skip the line. Go ahead, Pastor. And he puts us in good rooms, watch this, sometimes before our time. <laughs> so that's why the aspect of tithing and offering is so important. But one scripture lets us know that he rebukes the devourer, the things that's trying to take away from you unconsciously. Watch this. You have a force that's fighting on your behalf as you skip the line and get to the great rooms and destinations that God has for you. Everybody receive that? Yeah. Listen, at this time, I want you to know we have three ways of giving. Number one, that's our cash app. Money sign, C-O-P, the number four, the letter U. All right, the second thing is uh, you can give cash and or check, all right? And we have envelopes for you to do so right now. Uh, fill that out for your tax purposes so we can keep record of all of that good giving or uh, that you can get that back uh, to be accredited at the end of next year for you. Lastly, Pastor Fred, I love worshiping God in the aspect of tithing and offering, but I ain't down with COVID. I watch it virtually. How can I do that? Simple. Put it in the mail. 3124 West Main, Suite 8, 36305. All right? Hey, this is the time right now that you can worship God in the aspect of giving. Yeah! I pray everybody have a great week. Also, uh, Elder Davis is preaching in Birmingham this morning. Uh, so let's keep him in prayer as he goes to build the assignment that he had to do this morning. Amen. How everybody doing? Come on, live it up. Bless, bless. We bless. All right. Come on, Paul. Let's bless it, man. Everybody, I hope you uh, had a chance to worship God and ask that they giving as we reach our hands forward to bless us. Father, we thank you right now for blessing us with the opportunity to worship you in the aspect of tithing and offering. We thank you right now, God, because we understand that it's through the aspect of worshiping you in this manner, God. You can put us in great rooms before our time, at the right time, and in your time. So we thank you right now that you're going to work this for your kingdom agenda. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Right now, we're getting ready to put you in the hands of SBU. <laughs> Spiritual voices no, no. united. Yeah, we're going to hey, we're gonna bring this thing on. Right? Hold on one second. Let me clean this. Let me get that back to you. Praise the Lord. Come on and just stand on your feet as we go into worship this morning. Hallelujah, Jesus. We just thank you for being here. Father, come on and just set your minds on the Lord. Go 
work of promise keep light in the darkness my God that is who you are you are here touching every heart I worship you I worship Jesus. 
Hallelujah. We take this time to adore you. Waymaker. Come on. That right there is powerful. Waymaker. Miracle worker. Come on. Waymaker. You are a waymaker, Jesus. Waymaker. Come on, when we can see it, you are. Waymaker. Keep standing till you believe it. You are. Waymaker. Miracle worker. Promise keeper. Light in the darkness. My God. That is who you are. Last time, say it one more time. Waymaker. Waymaker. Miracle worker. Promise keeper. Light in the darkness. My God. That is who you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Come on, come on. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Come on, come on. Hey. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Man, I love that. Hey, come on, put your hands together and thank God that you're in the house one more time. I'm so excited to be here with you guys. I want to thank God for everybody that made it out. Please Ooh, yes. bear with us. I know it's muggy. I know it's hot. <laughs> but that's the time calls for desperate measures. Amen. So we do thank God for everybody that has sacrificed to come and sit outside uh, this morning. And I dare not waste your time by doing that. I want to thank God for all of the members in Olive Branch, Mississippi, yes. Savannah, Georgia, Auburn, Opelika, uh, Birmingham, Alabama. We thank God for also Central Florida. Uh, Mother Lord, God bless you. Love you. Yes. Miss you. Mother Miles and the crew out there, uh, Lampkins, uh, Carolyn and that crew in Auburn, over like the poor. I, we love all of y'all so much, and we thank God for you all. All of our virtual guests, thank you for joining us this morning. Um, I'm so uh, excited. Oh, and uh, one of our part-time members on here, I'm, I'm, uh, I ain't going to call her name. I, she says she's part-time. So, uh, good morning to one of our part-time members. <laughs> <laughs> There's some folks here that know what I'm talking about. It's just too funny, but we thank God for all of, all of those that's hey, got that Nicodemus spirit on. They want to watch from afar and hang out with us at night. <laughs> Nevertheless, we thank God for everybody being here. Listen, go ahead and grab your Bibles. Let's go to Revelation 2 4 and 6. I'm going to reteach some of what I talked Tuesday night. But the simple fact, I, I talked to a truck driver. What night that was, baby? Wednesday, Thursday night? Thursday night. And he told me, he said, Doc Thomas, he said, I put it on my Bluetooth speakers and I lay in the cab and I let it play loud in my ears. He said, I gave my life to God all over again. He said, what I found out was there's a difference between listening to the word and eating it. And I ate it that night. I said, what? I said, listen, man, God is faithful. But anybody that was on the live, I understand that the enemy did not want us to get it out. Tornado sirens were going on. And I really didn't care because I'm a storm chaser at heart anyway. I was out here looking at the clouds. My wife was fussing at me that day because I done put the keys in the closet. And I'm out the door. And she said, what are, what are the keys at? I said, they're in the closet. So she, where you at? I said, I'm outside. Get in the house. <laughs> but nevertheless, hey, you know, I always want to be a storm chaser. Revelations 2, uh, verse 4 through 6. I'm going to read this from the Good News Translation for preaching and teaching purposes today. And we're going to go back into this repentance thing a little bit. Is that all right? And for those that you that don't know, somebody had questions on drug and alcohol Tuesday night. So that's what I'm teaching them. It was in the box. So I got to deal with it. All right? Verse 4. Everybody got it. Shout back at me and say, I got it. Yeah. All right, that's enough for me to read. But this is what I have against you. You do not love me now as you did at first. 
Verse 5. Think how far you have fallen. Turn from your sins and do what you did at first. Somebody shout at first. At first. I started to title this message first 48, but I wouldn't. You know, a lot of people don't like that show because they said violence and all But I was going to title this first 48, but I'm going to wait on that. Do something later with that. If you don't turn from your sins, I will come to you and take your lampstand from its place. But this is what you have in your favor. You hate what the Nicolaitans do as much as I do. I'm going to speak to you guys from a subject this morning. Let's do it again. Some of y'all are probably saying where well, I got that from. I'm going to share it with you. And hopefully you'll watch it tonight. There was a movie that came out a long time ago with Bill Cosby and Sidney Poitier. And it's called Let's Do It Again. Pop, you didn't say that. Good. Eh? And the storyline goes as such. You got Clyde Williams, who was portrayed by Sidney Poitier, and Billy Foster, who was portrayed by Bill Cosby. Or a couple of blue collar workers in Atlanta who have promised to raise funds for their fraternity. However, their method for raising the money involves traveling to New Orleans and rigging a boxing match. Y'all got to watch this movie. Using hypnotism, they turn a scrawny underdog, which is JJ. I go ahead and tell you, JJ from Good Time, into a super confident fighting machine. They get heavily on him. He wins easily, and they return to Atlanta. Watch this with all their money. All is fine until the gangsters that were done by these two figures figured out what happened and they show up in Atlanta with a grudge. Now Williams and Foster have to rig another fight so that the gangsters can get their money back or they be killed. And the question is, can they do it again? I had an uncle and an aunt that passed to the church in Ozark. And he was known for a saying that he would say all the time. He said that sin would take you farther than you want to go. And it would keep you longer than you want to stay. And out here we got to understand now, sin is nothing more than to miss the mark. So there's a chance that the believer could miss the mark. And watch this. Start entertaining it. And it takes you somewhere way farther than God ever intended for you to be. And just like Clyde and Billy, you'll find yourself having to do something again that you really didn't have to do if you would have just let your love put you in the right situation to get it done. All right? Missing the mark should never be the option to make a believer feel free. The key to verse 4 is not the word love, but first. Returning to your first love. Watch this. Your first always involves passion. All the way. First time tasting your favorite food. First time experiencing a new city. Your first boyfriend. Your first girlfriend. Watch this. Your first heartbreak. That first puppy love that seems so intense, it involves so much pet. The first game, hands sweaty, you've been working, and all of a sudden at seven o'clock, the stands are filled, and you get your first opportunity to perform that that you've been working so hard and you love. Our first always involves passion the problem with us people is we have a tendency to get bored or lax after our passion is tested matthew 24 12 and 13 reads it like this and because of iniquity and because iniquity shall abound the love of many watch this shall wax cold but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Let me share something with you, Paul. You can't get bored with what you love until you're introduced to something new. Jesus. But watch this. New 
may be tempting, but it's not certain. Our first love, which is Christ, is always sure. It's the job of the enemy, watch this, to tempt us that, watch this, we walk away from our first love. Because, watch this, it's our first love in him that fulfills. As you look at verse 5, notice now, he said, think about how far you have fallen and turn from where you missed the mark and do your first work over again. The remedy to turning is to remember. Y'all remember Tuesday night we was talking about how the man works? Watch this COP. If it ever gets to the point where our church is more about how pretty the building is going to be, how blessed we are, the prestige that God may grant us or the favor he may grant us in the city. We can literally end up doing church without his presence. We can come, we can teach, we can preach, tithe and offer, shout, dance, sing, watch this. But the love has waxed cold. So the intensity of that passion is not the same. I was going to say something. I'm going to hold it. The lampstand that he's talking about is described in great detail. The practical function of the lampstand or the golden lampstand was to shed light, watch this, in the holy place. But it also represented the life and light God gives, watch this, to his people. Do you not know that our body is now the holy temple where the light resides? It's where the presence of God now dwells. So he's saying, watch this, as you fall, you can't negate to think about where you're falling to. So you can make that turn, watch this, so the light or presence of God in you is not removed. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20, let me tie it together so we can get to where we're going. What ye are not, what ye know not your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which he have, watch this, of God, meaning he placed his spirit on the inside of you. And ye are not your own, for ye are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God, watch this, in your body and in your spirit, watch this, which are God. So then verse 6, I'm setting some stuff up. But this is what you have in front of you that you don't agree with some other folks agree with. Check this out. Even though there have been some changes in our relationship, we still have not uh, com uh, compromised in all aspects. This is why we have to do it again. In other words, go back and repent again. It's a hard repentance now that keeps the flame of your lamp Burn. No matter how far I fall, I got to keep a mind to tell God, hey, forgive me. Pull me out of this. I know what I just did was wrong. But I need you to give me a mind. Watch this to turn so my lamp can continue to burn. Watch this. Just because you're saved doesn't mean you're perfect. Perfection, a lot, I'm going to shock a lot of y'all when I say this. Perfection also don't mean that you don't have blemishes. It just means you're mature in the eyesight of God's word. What does that mean? You ever seen the Mona Lisa, uh, the Mona Lisa painting? I guarantee you every stroke is not perfect. But to the eyes of the beholders, it's a perfect master art piece. It's perfect, but yet has blemishes. Can I tell you? When you keep a repentant heart, that's the ability to you come into maturity or perfection. Watch this. Even with your faults, you can tell God, Lord, I know I'm this way. I don't desire to be there. Change my mind. And watch this. The lampstand will shine from the inside until it shows up in brilliance. Watch this. On the outside. But you got to remember where you fail. 
instead of learning how to live there. Amen. That's why memory serves a purpose. If I run around the circle, Kurt no, it used to be a guy named Running Man. Long beard. You know Running Man. Knows. This man literally jogs around the whole circle until he had the stroke and stuff. And what he told me one day, he said, I've done it so much, I know where every hole is on the track because I've sprained my ankle enough to know why this, what every hole is. Jesus, what I'm saying, as we run this life, we should, hey, it's nothing wrong with rolling sometimes. But watch this. You got to remember what those potholes are. Watch this. A just man may fall seven times, but he gets back he up again. Up. He's just because he realizes where he has fallen. Because when he understands where he's fallen, watch this, he also knows where he can go to. Yeah. It's different when you fall. You lose recollection of where you fell from. That's why I don't fuss with people that don't know what I know. You falling and you don't have no memory of where you come from. So it's my job to let my light shine so I can show you what this, how to get to where God is taking all of us. That's why none of us has a hand to throw a rock. Yes. So I brought to you on Tuesday night the word repent. Which literally means to feel or express sincere regret or remorse about one's wrong doing or sin. And then I told you on Tuesday night that the word repent has a military background, which means or come from the same thing about faith. I can't do it. I got some military guys here, but I ain't gonna and, and a military later. I ain't gonna put them on the spot to show it to me. They got the nice sneakers on. I seen. He got fourteens on back there. I saw him when he came out. I know he even put that foot down the chair. But listen, about phase only happens when the commander says so. Go ahead. I started thinking about it. You can try to push a person to repent, but watch this. If God haven't dealt with them about it, Go ahead, Pastor. you can fuss you all day. But until the commander says about, about faith. faith I could be mad all day and see the potential in somebody and they steady running into a wall and I could fuss at them. Why are you doing this? You need to stop. You need to do the But watch this. Until the commander, commander go ahead. put something in their spirit and say, hey, about faith. Oh, yes, Lord. Which means to stop. Uh -huh. I, I got my whites on, so I ain't been doing too much. We got to see how you do it. Don't <laughs> No mind don't look as Chris, they all the people do it. But what it means is for you to do a 180. 180. Not a 360. Not a 360. Go ahead, man. Let's go. Come on. Come on, Sam. Come on. I'm trying to get him, y'all. Here. But kid, can you do one? Good. Huh? You got your dress shoes on? My bad. I'm sorry. Man, I want somebody to do it so bad for me, but it's all right. It's, hey, we're we going we, we to make it. Hey! She got sandals on. We don't want her to spray put on her. We don't want to do it like that. She got sandals on, too. I can't call up her. But y'all get the point. What I told y'all Tuesday night is, as the formation goal, if you turn too early, you mess up everything in the potential. Go ahead, I want to make your mind real quick. What if God has designed for you to go through what you're going through? What if God allows you to keep on? I said, I don't believe God will let people just hang out in the club for a while. I don't believe God will let a person get caught up in this and I'm not well, I pose to you that he let Lazarus die. Uh -huh. it is. Let his homeboy die. Yeah. Just so he can show other people how much power he got in his hand. Oh. I suggest to you, Roman lets us know that Pharaoh's heart wasn't just hard because he wanted it to be. Yeah. That God allowed his heart to be that way. Watch this. 
so I can holler Go ahead. about faith. Now watch this. At the moment he said that, he had to let, watch this, the people go. Watch this. Everybody started turning at the same time, watch this, to get to the promised land. What I'm telling you is that sometimes, and the majority of the time, it's going to take the commander speaking for you to turn around in the things that you're in. Or watch this, even the things that we find ourselves falling into. Yeah. The worst thing I hate about the Christian church is, is when they present to you that when you get saved, you don't fall. So everybody testifies about what God has brought them from and never testify about how God has raised them back up when they have fallen after accepting go ahead, him. Go ahead. Because accepting Christ does not eliminate us from falling. You don't. That's why grace and repentance was put in place for us to do like Sidney and Bill. Sometimes our Lord calls us to do some things we end up having to do it again so we can get out of it. So I showed you on Tuesday night in the Hebrew, the word repent literally means to change your mind. And I took you to Romans 7 and 7, how it showed that if he didn't give us the word, we really wouldn't know what sin is. Could you imagine? I know me and my foot. If there were no speed limit signs in Dover, no stop sign, no traffic lights, no yield, no children sign, no flashing lights when school out, no crossing guard to let you know, hey, something across the street, something coming from this way, something coming from this. Could you imagine the horrific uh, journey you would have getting to church this morning, even if you live? Five minutes away, do you not know what all you could have experienced in a five-minute trip had it not been for stop signs, traffic lights, yield signs? That's all the Lord was trying to tell us in the Old Testament. I got to give you something to show you, watch this, where you have fallen. So I can change your mind so you won't create an appetite to keep going down that lane. Watch this now. The first time... Ooh, wow. I gotta hold that. Mm. The first time I ever tasted chocolate, it did something to my mind, God, because I never tasted nothing like that before. I don't know what your chocolate is. You just replace it with whatever. The first time I tasted chocolate and it hit my taste book, my body said, mm, what is that? And it created a pathway with neurons to tell my body, you want some more of that. Here's the problem with the flesh. When we have an appetite for the things of the world, mm -hmm. it does the same thing. Yes. That's how we get an appetite for falling. Mm -hmm. But watch this. The more you hear God's word, yeah. it gives you an appetite of faith of how to get back to where you have fallen from. So he gave us the commandments in the Old Testament to help change our mind. To give us something that when we made a mistake, something should trigger us and say, I shouldn't have did that. It should bring comfort to let us know the right way of how to do that. But the problem was, the more it showed me how wrong I was, about myself wanting to do more wrong stuff, as Paul said. So now I literally walk in a life where I want to do good, but evil is always present. I tell y'all the story all the time. Every time I go in all in credit union, I'm just going to make a deposit. And I look to my right, I see them steel bars, I see them safe deposit boxes, and I see that big safe with the wheel on it. And all of a sudden, a thought says, You think you can get away with it? <laughs> yeah. But watch this. Because I know the commandments, it snatches me back and convicts me to let me know, don't even try. But watch this. Even though I was coming up and I knew right or wrong, it wasn't enough for me to know the word in my hand. I needed it in my heart to stop my hand from doing it anyway. 
That's it. So then we roll on to the New Testament where it comes and lets us know that repentance is the state changing in and all elements composing to one life to include our attitude. So now the word that I held in my hand gets in my heart and it deals with my attitude. Your attitudes are nothing more than the fruitful expressions of what you're dealing with inwardly. That's what the attitude is. So if you sit like this, you ain't got to tell me something wrong. I can already tell you in thinking something that agitated your spirit this morning because you locked all up. So you're in deep meditation. You don't want to be bothered because of the fruit expressions of your attitude. Watch this. Then it deals with our thought process. And then our behaviors, watch this, according to the demand that God wants for right living. Hence, I took you to Matthew 3, verses 1 and 2, and it says, In those days, John the Baptist started preaching the word in the wilderness of Judea, saying, Repent, all the two stones telling you what the Lord said. I'm telling you, what we used to bring down from the mountaintop and carry in our ark is now here and you can touch it. And he took it a step farther and Jesus said, you know what? These folks need more than the ability to touch me. They need to be able to receive me or engulf me or be endued with me. So he died and released the spirit. So now the word is in spirit form and it lives on the inside of us. That's our lampstand. Christ living on the inside of us, shining from the inside out. Then I took y'all to Revelation 3, 19 to 22. See, those whom I dearly and tenderly love, I rebuke and discipline, showing them their faults and instructing them. So be enthusiastic and repent. In other words, when God sees us to continue and fall, he will show up. Watch this. I told Brother Sam one day, he was talking to me, and I said, the Bible states that there is no temptation, but it's such as coming to man, that he has not given us a way of escape. In other words, he done dealt with everything. He know what it, I'm going to shock. I can't say it. I just keep. He know what it feels like to be lonely. He know what it feels like to be angry. Knows what it feel like to be betrayed. All these things that we can feel in life, Christ felt. He said, I made a way of escape. I want to challenge y'all. Yes, I know Jesus is the door, but he created us to be hallways to it. So my question is, what if you are the door for someone else's escape? What if you are the hallway that leads them to the door? Hear me out now. What if grace comes to me with a problem and I haven't taken the time to keep a repentant mind state that God will shift my attitude, shift my thoughts and my behavior, and she comes to me with a problem. Everybody can't hear God's voice, but they may come in contact with you. And watch this. What if I'm in a fallen state and she's falling and don't know. Y'all remember the commercial? I'm falling and I can't get up. What if the person that answers the phone say, I'm falling too? <laughs> <laughs> Y'all see that little old lady? I just saw the little lady laying on the floor with the little light. Yeah. What, what I'm saying is, what if God sends someone to you that's in a fallen state and we're falling ourselves? So a lot of times we think when God comes and corrects us, we take it the wrong way when in essence he's trying to get us back to right standings because we are the hallway for someone else to meet the door. So now I got to take you all the way back to Revelation 2 to bring you all the way to 7 and I'm done. Revelation 2 verse 7 says this. If you have ears, then listen to what the Spirit says to the churches. To those who win, 
the victory, I will give you the right to eat the fruit of the tree of life that grows in the garden of God. In other words, to hope to those who win the victory, the King James Version says those that overcome, meaning those who conquer in the midst of in something or through something, whatever circumstances that are illegitimately holding you, those that learn how to conquer that, repent their way through it, watch this, can eat of the tree of life that waits on you in the garden of God. We make our way to the tree of life through faith and repentance. What I want to tell y'all today is simple. Look at your life. If there's any state of you that has fallen, don't focus on where you failed. Look at where you fell from. And when you repent, a lot of people don't believe this. God will place you there. When you read the story of the prodigal son, when he failed, he took his inheritance. He went and had him a good time. And watch this. It came to a point that he finally found himself in a hog pen eating with hogs. Hogs symbolize people that will do anything. Sell them for anything. They eat slop. Anything that won't eat a pig, he'll eat it. All the leftovers. Anything that's spoiled in the refrigerator, they just take it and they throw it out there. They waddle in the mud and they eat it. A king's son found himself in that situation, just dealing with anything and anybody. And watch this. He came to remembrance in the midst of it and said, you know what? Even the servants in my father's house live better than this. Let me get up from here, watch this, and go back to the place before I fail. And by faith and repentance, he got up and headed back to the place that he once was. And the beauty of the story is on his way, his daddy met him. And watch this. He gave him a robe and a ring. I say to you today, you are one faith statement and repentance away from getting back to the place in which you have fallen. It's just that simple. Let's not make this thing all weird and all hard. All you got to do is remember where you once was. And God will stir that passion back up. And the flames of that lampstand will start burning all over again. In the words of Sidney Portier and Mr. Bill Cosby, let's do it again. Everybody resting on your feet. Let's we play a song for me. We used to sing songs in church like, come to Jesus. Don't play it. Let's sing this. Come to Jesus. Just now. Just now. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Just now. He will save you. He will save you. He will save you. Just now. Just now. He will save you. He will save you. Just now. Just now, come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. 
Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Just now. Just now. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Just now. He will heal you. He will heal you. He will heal you. He will heal you just now. Just now. He will heal you. He will heal you. Yes, now restore. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Just now. Just now. I'm gonna hit you with the restore. He will restore you. He will restore you just now. Look, if there's anybody that say, Pastor, keep saying come to Jesus. Come if there's anybody that says, Pastor Fred, everybody here is bound. This is a sacred moment right here. I understand that I'm in the process of being perfected. And I have done everything the way I know I could do it. And I have fallen in some areas. But I know where I'm supposed to be. I need you to raise your hand right now. I'm going to raise mine. Y'all ain't got to hold your head. If you know that you haven't fallen, you can raise your hand right now. It's okay. Everybody heads is down. This is a sacred moment. Nobody looking. Eyes are closed. If you're online and you're saying, Pastor Fred, I need to do it again. I need to go do my first works over. We ain't going to embarrass you. We ain't going to make you come up on everybody. I just need you to show God by lifting up your hands that, Lord, I need to do some stuff over again. It's okay. I'm the only one got my head up. My eyes are open. I see you. I see you. You can put your hands down if you already lift. I see you. All right. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Just now, just now, come to Jesus, come to Jesus, just now. Father, I thank you right now, because even at my own life, God, I see places where I have fallen. And I stand before even the body of believers and say, God, forgive me for where I have fallen. And today I repent of all my sins, all my shortcomings, all my misfires, all the things that I've done that I've known that I shouldn't have did. All the things that I've done this week, God, that don't amount to what you call me to be. Lord, I see myself as the way you see me. And I come back to you, God, with my hands lifted. We show as a sign today, Lord. We lift our hands to you. We do our first works over again. God, that you won't come to us quickly and remove your presence from us. God, we want that fire to continue to burn. So we lift our hands in adoration and surrender it to you, saying, God, forgive us for our shortcomings, the things that we've done wrong, the things that we don't even know we're doing wrong. And we ask that you forgive us today and bring us, God, out of the hall pins of our decisions. And bring us back to a place of destiny. That we can get to the destination that you have set for us. Father, I thank you right now because your arms are outstretched. And your telling us, come to you. I receive you just as you are. You're meeting us where we are, God, with a robe and a ring. Signifying you are my child. You are mine. You are my legacy. And I thank you, God, that you receive us today. That you died on the cross for our sins. That our souls won't be lost. We thank you today for your restoring power. We thank you today for your delivering power. That your hand is not too short. That you won't reach down into the earth. And snatch us out of those things in which we've fallen. 
that our faith will put us back to a place that you desire. So we thank you today, God, and we, we, we recommit our hearts to you. We, we resubmit our spirits to you, God, that you may have free course and lead us and guide us back in the place that you desire. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Lord, we pray for the Neil family, that you would touch their home, overshadow them with your presence and your glory. We send a word to prayer to Sister Dolores, God, in her need. We pray, God, that you heal it. God, that you go down to the structures of it, God, and bring her out. Lord, we pray for all of the members that could not make it today. We pray, God, that you lift up a standard. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Listen, we're going to be running something different next Tuesday. I'm changing up a little bit. We're going to do drive-in another Sunday. Next Tuesday, we, I mean next Sunday, we're going to do drive-in. We're going to do our testimony service next Tuesday. And I want to do Zoom next Sunday, I'm sorry. And I want to do a Zoom link also because I want goals that are outside the Olive Branch, Mississippi. I want to give those time and opportunity to testify if they desire. So I may set a TV screen up here and we may... uh. We're going to run Zoom so they testify, and the church will be able to hear their testimony. Savannah, Georgia, Olive Branch, uh, over Auburn, over Life of Birmingham, Central Florida. If you guys would love to testify, I want y'all to do that. And I'm going to get, because there's ways to do it. So we're going to have Zoom so everybody can see y'all faces. They'll be able to hear y'all and interact with y'all. I'm going to sit a TV right here. We're going to run a Zoom. Everybody going to be able to take part in that testimony service and be able to. Have a part in it. All right. Is that okay with everybody? I think it's going to be real good. All right. Um, last but not least, did, did we miss anything? Oh, I do want, if anybody wants to see what we talked about in our church meeting, immediately after service, I will take you to see it. All right. If you are here and you want to go see it, y'all know what I'm talking about. I want y'all to hop in the car behind me and we're going to go for a ride. We're going to go check it out. Everybody cool with that? All right. Um, if anybody is on here virtually and say, hey, or physically, I know somebody, some family here, I want to bring them up. Um, if you say, I love the way COP flows, and I want to join a church family like that. Listen, today, all you got to do is say, I'm ready. Somebody watch the live. If we got anybody that desires to join with this body of believers, now is your time. Now is your time to come forward. Hey, y'all ready back there? Y'all can come on. Listen, I want y'all to put y'all hands together. We got some people, a beautiful family that called me the other day and they said, hey, we don't pray about it. This the place for us. I said, come on. Put them hands together, see your people. Those beautiful family. Look at this beautiful family. Yeah. A beautiful model of what God wants. A man, a woman, and his children coming to God. Hey, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Give me some doubt. Give me some doubt. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Give me some doubt. Boom. Boom. Listen, I knew this family. I didn't say, I ain't going to say I knew. Where you at? Right on that block. Come on right now. I, I knew this family spirit was connecting when one Sunday they called me and they said, hey, I don't know if he called me or text me. He said, hey, Pastor Fred, we ain't going to be here this Sunday. And in my mind, I'm saying, well, I mean, y'all hadn't officially connected, but you ain't really got to tell me that, but I, but I understood and they understood Hey, even though I ain't connected, I want somebody praying on me. We drive. That's it, that's it. Are we on the road? I want to make sure somebody know we at, so somebody can pray over us, keep us. And at that moment, I said, Lord, I don't know when it's gonna be, <laughs> but if you want to send them to us, we will take them. Yeah. So me and Lady A want to say to you guys what we say to everybody. I'm not asking y'all to call me pastor. I'm not asking for accolades of that. We're asking, let us seek God. Let us earn the right for y'all to call us pastor. 
Let me seek God and pray for y'all. And seek God for a word for Tuesday night that's going to help y'all cultivate your family, build your faith, bring your life in full. Because let us seek God for that priest and teach to you on Sunday morning to help you not only get to heaven, but for your life to work. Let us let us seek to do that. Then when you say pastor, it'll come from your spirit. Yeah. And it just won't be some mundane thing we do because of church. Yeah. It'll come because of the connection that's there. Okay? So what I want to say to y'all is welcome to this part of the body. And we call C O P. Listen, we got a y'all go in. A QR code. If y'all go in there, scan it with your phone. I need y'all to fill out all that information. We're gonna get some birthdays, and anniversaries, and stuff like that. And uh, we can see. Hey, Father Lady, <laughs> hey, we need to get y'all shirts. We gotta get y'all bounds. We forgot to get the Davises and they bounds and stuff too. So all, when y'all watch this, don't feel chill. We got y'all stuff too. Get y'all bounds because I know y'all hear me on Tuesday night. Say pull out your binder. We take notes around here. Get your binder. We got shirts for the kids, and y'all pick y'all pick y'all shirts out there. Uh, the bands like this are at the house. I make sure I get y'all some bands so y'all can represent. Again, welcome to this thing called COP. And you want to tell you the beautiful thing is when he called me and told me that him and his family had prayed about it. You know what the next thing he said? We already know what we want to serve. Yeah. Yeah. Put my spirit, bro. Keep up on cloud nine. I said, let me know. Why is it? They didn't come in looking for prestige. Oh, yeah. And they said, hey, we already know what we want to put our hands yeah, yeah. That let me know they already connect because their hands already ring oh, with me. So, hey, y'all follow Lady A. She's going to get y'all set up, boy. I'm fine. Hey, look, y'all got, got something y'all want to say? Hey, hey, give me that spray right there, right there. I'll let y'all. Well, um, this is a exciting moment for us. Yes. You know, being a military family, we're having to adapt and adopt a family everywhere we go. You know, right now our life is kind of a little bit in the balance. So this took a lot of praying, a lot of obedience. One thing I learned early in my early life is obedience. Even though I wasn't, you know, spiritually mature yet, obedience was something that I learned early. Yeah. And something that I've, I've definitely picked up recently is true surrender. Yeah. So spiritually, uh, I've been trying to be obedient and give my life and give my heart completely to God in ways that don't make sense to me always, especially with the imbalance that we have going on in our life. Mm -hmm basically the possibility of moving via military but this just made sense god said do it and we did it yeah, yeah. Right. yeah i just want to caveat on what he said it's all about obedience and um a love to help and a desire to want to help the church progress because god knows as well needs it we need it we need each other yeah. and um yeah just the heart to to be here as long as God sees fit to give whatever we have to give and see whatever he has for us to receive. So, yeah. 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 All right. All right. All right. Listen, with that being said, um, man, moment, y'all see this meeting. Right. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Huh? I always told God, I had my boots huh? Yeah. I don't want some, uh, I'm not like boots. I want some real men around me. Huh? You know what I mean? I want some real men around me. Some men that's going to tell me, hey, Pastor Fred, hey, you know, speak to me. You see what I'm saying? I love that. So, hey, listen. I love you. God bless you. Hey, anybody? I'll make sure I ain't miss nobody. All right. Listen, God bless you. I'll see you Tuesday night, 6.30 p.m. Listen, don't eat my barbecue. Say it because baby. Hey, listen, y'all enjoy yourself. I'm going to go sit down somewhere.
and rest my bones a little bit. I love you guys. Be safe on the road if you're traveling. God bless you. Have a prosperous Sunday.